Strategic Hot Box with Dr. Brandy Love Stankovic. Discussing leadership, business, and how to take control of your life and achieve greatness. From the streets of Las Vegas, energized, informed, and never diluted. It's time to kick some ass. Welcome back to the Strategic Hot Box. It's your girl, Dr. Brandy Stankovic, and boy, are we in for a treat today. Woohoo! Spirit Fingers. I feel like nothing better than Spirit Fingers for our very special guest, Mr. Frank Marino. Thank you for being here. Thank you for here. having me here. This is we exciting. have real Las Vegas royalty in front of us. Oh, I can feel myself blushing. Yeah. Oh, it happens. I'm going to come back more. Chills. <laughs> Chills happening. Oh, this is incredible. And our episode today is called Drags to Riches. Drag to Riches. It's going to be great. Let's get started. As you know, on the Hotbox, we learn, we love, and we kick ass. And the Hotbox is recorded here in Las Vegas. Now, what happens in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas. Unless, of course, it happens on the hot box, right? Because then all of you get to see and and hear all the amazing things that we have going. And I wanted to talk about quickly the evolution of things that have occurred in Vegas, and then dig into the hows and whys and what actually what re- what's really going on in Vegas from the expert here from from our Las Vegas Royal team in Vegas. I it, just in my experience, the, the years that I've lived here have been is certainly visiting, and years that I didn't. Then way back. Back in the day, we had the old school lounge singers. We had the the Wayne Newtons or the Rat Packs and and that type of entertainment that was around. Then then we had days of Liberace and Elvis, and it was a bit more kind of glamorous and exciting and out there. And then we had years. We even. The, I remember the years of the fan, family-friendly Vegas. So there was the Excalibur or Circus Circus or you know some of those those types of, of entertainment pieces. And I think that no matter what, we've always had the flair for the risque, and all of the shows always had that kind of flair of what is how do we push boundaries and be a bit more risque. And as many of you know, we did have uh, Liz Eaton here on the show from Crazy Girls, um, and I and all of the different shows pushed boundaries in, in, in different in different avenues and uh, Celine Dion certainly in some of the evolution brought back this idea of this a-list celebrity residency we have top chefs that come back and do these restaurants and and Vegas really has uh, created these different over the years these different paths to enhance the amenities to enhance the reason why it's become much more of a destination beyond gambling and uh, there's been many pioneers that have allowed for that reinvention and many that I just named of course but I would be um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention our guest Frank Marino and his impact that he's had along the way he's changed entertainment and brought more vaudeville uh, medium something that maybe wasn't as looked at as mainstream to the more mainstream stage and I would think that he's he's, he would say that it takes more than just a pretty face to make some of that happen it's more than just incredible talent it takes a, a, a relentless work ethic it takes a lot of gumption to 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 make it and so i'd like to formally introduce you he needs no introduction but i'd like to formally introduce you to the legend we have the creator of divas las vegas here with us today the and the longest running headliner in las vegas as joan rivers an accomplished author and newscaster and columnist and spokesperson and of course america's favorite favorite male actress. Uh, Your first book, His Majesty the Queen, was an immediate bestseller. You starred Miss Congeniality 2 with Sandra Bullock, and I need to know if she's even fun at all. An award-winning guest uh, in starring role in the hit off-Broadway play Tony and Tina's Wedding. Yes. Really cool. Las Vegas uh, Mayor Oscar Goodman actually proclaimed February 1st as Frank Marino Day. You have a key to the city, a street named Frank Marino Drive, and a star in the Las Vegas Hall of Fame. And you performed over 25,000 shows in front of 10 million people. You know, I'm tired just hearing you do that introduction. (laughs) I swear. No wonder I'm pooped. I have the chills again (laughs) just reading that bio. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. We are very, very lucky. Spirit fingers again. This is so exciting. So tell us a little bit about your rise to royalty. Well, you know, a lot of times people say, like, when you first got here day one, did you think it would last that long? And, and this is going to sound odd. I really did. Did you? I just knew the show itself, and I don't mean me. I'm talking about everybody in it. 
was so much fun and it could constantly change that once we got in the door, we had a pretty stable situation that we would last. Mm -hmm. So yes, I, I knew that what happened would happen. Um, and that's normally not the answer you get from somebody. It's usually a surprise. Right, right. But I, in my head, I just felt it would. Why Vegas? Well, I love, so the dream for me was we had family move to Vegas when I was a child and we would come visit Las Vegas and the glitz and the glamour and the, we would go to the hotels and we, in the olden days, go to the top floor while our parents were gambling and look for the movie stars. I remember <laughs> one time a security guard said, you can't stay up here. What do you guys do? Oh, we're looking for the penthouse. Um, <laughs> right? Is this where Cher is? You know, <laughs> and uh, he's like, the stars aren't even up here. These are even richer people. These are the corporation owners that have these suites. And I right. was like, oh, okay, so they're the ones with the real money. Right, right. That's that's where we need to be. And so, what what's that magic formula then? If somebody, like, what what made Divas Las Vegas so successful? So I think with that vacationing that I would do here, I loved it so much. I. This might sound crazy, but I just felt the energy that I wanted to be here. So I think when you want something that bad and you and you just go over it and go over it in your head, and I would visit all the time, and the 24-hourness, just everything fascinated me, that when I first started, I ended up in, I lived in New York, but I, the first job in drag I got, big job, was in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida for season, mm -hmm. and I all of a sudden, Pia Zadora and her husband, Michelin Rickless, owned the Riviera. Mm. They came in just to watch the show. And the next thing you know, they were putting the show here for three months stay. And we stayed 25 years in that one hotel. Wow. So yeah. I just think by getting that energy out there, if you want something enough, mm -hmm. it happens. And what is something that... Uh, other artists, maybe other uh, business people, other entertainers just don't realize about the daily business grind. So when I first got here, the way it worked is if you performed, you'd get a paycheck at the end of the week. Then it was like a thing that they're calling four walls where you like rent the room like a restaurant, you'd be a vendor. And then you had to learn marketing when you got into that. Step. And then, then it went further. They wanted this from you and that from you. And you had to play this game every day and jump over these hoops because all they wanted to do was get more money into their pockets. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're making a lot of money on product. Let's charge 25% for product. Oh, um, people are taking photos after the show. I'm doing meet and greets. Let's take some of that money. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I, I, I think when you're not playing the game every day, mm -hmm. you think you just walk in and it's like the old days where they give you a check. And I, I love when I, I see people pitching shows and they go, okay, there's a hundred seats. And if everybody paid a hundred dollars and they tally it up and I go, no, if they knew <laughs> the commissions, the brokers took, th there is some, a lot of brokers that when we, you buy, let's say you just bought a ticket for my show, mm -hmm. the broker ends up with more money than the actual artist or the hotel or the product itself. Wow. So, People go, oh, you're getting $200 a ticket. No, I'm probably getting 17 but somebody's getting 200 <laughs> Right, right. Wow. And so, so yes. that and every year it gets harder because every year the ivory tower gets somebody sneaking up into it and going, you could do this and you could do that. Yeah. A new way to make money. And like you said, once they see another avenue for money, like whether it's merchandise, mm -hmm. whatever, then they're trying to... Right, because what we do is when they cut us in one area, we try to create another area. So being the creative people, we come up with these ideas, and then they take a portion of it or figure out a way to take a portion of it. Mm -hmm. So it's really strange. And our two major players in Vegas would be Caesars Entertainment and MGM. Mm -hmm. So when the executives cross pollinate and they do, you know how we made money here at Caesars, but now we have a job at MGM and we go, how come you're not doing this? Do this. The bottom line's going to go up and vice versa, the same thing. So pretty soon the mom and pop shows like myself are really not going to be able to, you, now 90% of them fall. I don't mm -hmm. think anything will last because you need the hotel to want you there, invest right. in you. It used to be a lost leader. Mm -hmm. And now it's not. It's something they want to make money from. Really? And so when it comes to uh, drag in general, have you seen an evolution of, of the acceptance of that in Vegas or or the, the, the glamour of it in Vegas? Yes. Um, and I, I, I have to be honest. Since I had a show in drag, mm -hmm. I lived in an ivory tower for 25 years because... 
I was the person then in the ivory tower. I didn't know what was going on outside. And like what I was doing here and getting applauded for, I could get beat up or killed somewhere else. So um, the, the time has changed, but now I'm finally seeing what went on downstairs on the floor. And, 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 and it's still there. RuPaul has really put it in the mainstream for television, mm -hmm. but it's still not where it should be. Mm -hmm. And it goes in and out of cycles, like Tootsie and Mrs. Doubtfire and mm -hmm. Tu Wong Fu and Birdcage. Anytime one of those movies are in it um, and you see your favorite stars doing drag, it becomes acceptable for that group. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And and hopefully it'll keep being like that. Like I did the movie with Sandra Bullock, Miss Congeniality 2, and the ending scene was all about drag where they came into my showroom to find the killer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was just... Another movie that used it's, it's always fun. People always love it, and mm -hmm. uh, if people just loosen up a little bit more, I think that the, everybody. I had Marines come out of my show and go, "My wife dragged me here. I'm not gonna lie. No pun intended. <laughs> but I had the best time. And you, you changed my my viewpoint on the whole situation." Oh, that's that, that that's amazing. And have we in the the 20 years that you know that you've been here in Vegas? Have 35 you years. 35 years that you've mm -hmm. been here in Vegas? It, has it changed an, enough? Has it changed that much? Um, it's changed. I, I'd like to think I was a big part of that change. Um, and But I know there were people before me, like, you know, you know a lot about Stonewall, uh, Stonewall in New York. When Judy Garland died, it was illegal for people to do drag. And all these drag queens were at a bar called Stonewall. Hmm. And uh, there were riots and everything. Wow. And they're the ones that opened the doors for us to be able to do it. We opened the doors to get it into casinos and let mainstream. Mm -hmm. RuPaul got it onto television. So it is constantly growing like that. Right. But I wish it would grow a little bit quicker. Yeah. It, and that's, that's the unfortunate piece of it is, is that it's been around for as long as it has. And yet it isn't mm -hmm. as mainstream as it could be already. And if you want to really go back, think about Kabuki mm -hmm. uh, with the makeup and everything. Think about Shakespeare. Oh, right. No women were allowed to be in the place. So the men had to be. So it really goes back further than you know you just consciously think every day it's sure. uh, it's got a history yeah it's a it, it in the classic you know sense mm -hmm. but yeah for, you're right remember Milt, milton burl used to have every tuesday night he did one of his skits were in drag uh oh. geraldine jones flip wilson had his character i i, I mean if, if you think archie bunker's place mm -hmm. there was a cross dresser on that show that had a recurring role wow. so even as risque as that show was yeah Wow. Uh, how do you, so then how did you take these acts or something that, that some people in the audience being dragged to or whatever end up becoming so relatable? How do you do that? Um, I don't know if I consciously figured out how to do it. It just happened. But I used to get angry because every time we do a TV role, the casting agent, not nowadays is on a computer, but you would have to show up for an audition. But we were always asked to play like in the sitcom Barney Miller is inside a jail, if, if, if you ever uh -huh, saw that. Uh -huh. And there'd always be a, uh, a, a drag queen hooker. You know, we were always the hookers, <laughs> you know, um, in the jail scene to talk to somebody else. And then the parts of, uh, evolved and they got bigger and they got more important. And mm. uh, that's what I was really like pushing and fighting for, mm -hmm. you know, it was like when black people said, we're not going to just play maids. We want to be the owner of the house and our maid is going to be like Hazel, you know, <laughs> the, you know she's going to be white or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what I kind of did with the, I want I kept pushing to get uh, better roles for us. And mm -hmm. that's why I say I'm America's favorite male actress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, and when you see a performer, somebody that you've been, you know, that recruited or asked to be a part of your show or anything, how how do you make that selection? How can you tell this person's going to be great? I always said I feel like Eileen Ford. And those of you who don't know who that is, she's the owner of Ford Modeling Agency. Mm -hmm. She probably gets a thousand inquiries a week mm -hmm. and one or two models end up on her roster per year wow. new because um, it's such a hard field to get into, that same thing with me. People, and now doing the show so long, the people that I use are really incredible. So if I have somebody new, they're going to be very young. They're going to have to be as good as this person I had for 20, 25, 30 years, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's what's making it more and more difficult. And I was lucky enough to get this handful of great talent that we've all been together since the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, a few leave, a few come, but... 
I have my basic core of these really talented individuals. Also drags moving from what we do with the character mm -hmm. to more just generic. So a lot of the pictures that they show of me is just femme fatale, just Frank, you know, and make, I call it generic drag mm -hmm. like that. Um, I started as Joan Rivers, mm -hmm. but I actually like doing the femme fatale more because uh, it's creative. You can make what you want. And unfortunately, I'm in a look like show, so I have to throw the Joan Rivers in there. Sure. But I like this part, but this is what's becoming more and more like RuPaul's just RuPaul. Uh -huh. That's what's coming more and more. The, the celebrity lookalike portion of it's sort of fading into the background. Okay, interesting. And how can you tell right away that some, no, the person is just not going to connect with an audience or n doesn't have that thing? Is there a, a quality like that? Yes, and I, I and unfortunately I'll say I do do that. See, mm -hmm. it just, I, I say uh, you'll probably be great in years. I just don't want to, I don't have the time to work it. In. You got to come mm -hmm. to me ready. But I look at pictures of me in the beginning, and it was not such a good sight. I thought uh, <laughs> I tried Bette Midler one time, and it wasn't a sure bet. I could, I could <laughs> tell you that for sure. And that, what's probably been the biggest kind of growth that you've seen in yourself over the years? I still learn every day. I literally will go into the other room and see the young kids and go, how are you doing that? How do you do this? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And I learn to this day. The problem is when people in any job stop learning mm -hmm. and think you know it all is when you stay stagnant and then you fall. Any mistakes along the way that you're willing to share? Every day. <laughs> every day I do something that I go, I shouldn't have done that. But if I didn't do it, all the things that were successful wouldn't have happened either. So you got to be willing to take a risk. You got to be... Like you said earlier, putting the work in because it's right. show business. That business part is a big part of that whole situation. So you got to be good with your money. And now I know why a lot of entertainers don't want their children going into it because it's so much hurt and ridicule. And now with Facebook, mm. if somebody doesn't like it, they have no problem. You know what I'm right. saying? You could be a Barbra Streisand, the biggest star in the world. And they go, she can't sing. Who does she think she is? Why does she want to produce? It's like people just take a rest and either watch her or don't watch her. You right, know? right, yeah. <laughs> We're not tying you down. You bought the ticket. And Barbara, you pay two grand for it. So have fun. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, that's, and that's the hard part about the digital age anymore is that people have so much more guts to... Mm -hmm. Keyboard uh, power, right? Keyboard yeah, bullies. To say things that they never would yes. say to our and face. I, I'll get people saying nasty things to me, and I learned my lesson. <laughs> I, I would want to come back mm -hmm. and I'm definitely more clever than the keyboard b bully with uh, my black belt in reading people <laughs> but I made the mistake of doing it one time and then it just goes viral so mm. you have to just take it you delete it you take it and you go okay mm -hmm. and uh where the old days I wouldn't wouldn't know somebody thought that so someone said something you snap back and right. then somebody f sees that right. well goes, they threw oh. a pebble and I hit him with a boulder and then they go oh well, if, if you want to go to war, be careful what weapon you use because we might have a better one. Right, right. Um, the, any, the, so this is a really important question. Do you have, a, your, what's your best makeup tip? Oh, my best makeup tip? I, I, there's a couple. I could, but these are good for just regular women. If you have like me where um, you're almost over 29 and you start <laughs> losing your joy. We didn't need any background laughter on that one. <laughs> Uh, you take dark shadows. Mm -hmm. You do dark shadows and highlight like a painting. Mm -hmm. You do that, and it gives you that. Everybody wants Catherine Hedberg's, you know, jawline like mm -hmm. that. Uh, it's also to thin out your nose, the same trick. Dark dark brings it in, light brings it out. You want under your eyes to pop out, so you'd use a light color. Um, but, just, oh, some, some for us, because obviously we're men, we draw in shadowing to make it look like cleavage that on a stage looks uh really good um some women do that too i didn't even know actually you know they just took a little bit of highlighter uh -huh. and it gives them a really nice shape on their decollete into their breast oh that's that. and so any sort of the what do they call that just uh i i've lost the words but i love i love that uh the using oh contour contouring yes, thank like, you yeah you know, like you see on on the pictures close up it might look like heavy makeup but far like look even on my lip there if the audience sees oh, that, yeah, yeah. the red lip but that gold that i put in the middle makes it look like it's a shine from a photograph but uh -huh. really it's just gold in the center and it makes it pop i love it and my neck is shaded for filth i i erase there you can see it really there too mm -hmm. i erase my whole face so i don't draw on joan rivers if i'm doing joan i erase it and most people would look at Joan's makeup and try to do the same thing. No, I take like a painting and try to paint Joan Rivers on as if it was flat. Hmm. So the makeup is 
more like painting when you're using the kind of makeup we're using. Yeah. And so, so it really does be you become an artist then in that. You become an art. I, if you said to do your makeup, I wouldn't know how. And people say, how could you not? I just know how to paint mine. Uh -huh. I wouldn't. I know how to paint one picture. I don't know how to paint other people's other pictures. And so, how do you maintain your your skin and everything with that kind of? I'm a skin freak. Uh huh. Um, I think uh, skin is what makes you stay looking younger. So I am a skin your freak. Skin's beautiful. And then I'm going to tell you, I use. Johnson & Johnson baby oil to take it off because I take my eyebrows away by using little kid glue stick from your child's box. I flatten them down. I, put, I have no eyebrows. I take away my sideburns because girls don't have sideburns like this mm -hmm. with nose putty. Uh. I put the base on. I put the powder on. And now it's a blank. Everything's just beige. And then I draw on what I want to draw on. Wow. Yeah. So I it takes that. me about 45 minutes to put it on, but like an hour to get it off because I got to use the baby oil. It's got to break up all that nose putty, like the clown shoes on mm -hmm. the nose. I use it to erase that heavy hairline. Mm -hmm. So wow. real women aren't going to do that part of no. it. But yeah. the baby oil was the point of most facialists like freak when I tell them, but I've been so lucky. Yeah. Uh, today, I won't lie. I did. I woke up with a pimple for the first time and like, years <laughs> and i'm like really <laughs> oh, i love it that that uh can you share a funny story or something crazy that's happened to you along the way uh one time i came out and i was doing my show and i looked down now picture this is really crazy right and i see my family doctor from new york now i was from new york right i said that earlier and i see and we were i was long island so it was a very small town everybody knew each other i see my doctor then i see the mailman oh no then i see a school teacher. And I'm like, am I on candid camera? Right. right? <laughs> so now I'm trying to show off because I think I'm on candid camera because it's just like crazy. There's like <laughs> 10 people in the audience that I like no, no, right? Right. Um, what it was, it was the Knights of Columbus there I had a trip to Vegas and all the people from Oceanside where, they, where I came from wanted to see my show because they knew I had the show. Aww. So, yeah, so here I am thinking, uh, uh, surprising me, I can't, and it was it was just a little reunion from New York. Oh, <laughs> that's cool, though. Did they yeah. love it? Oh, they had a great time. It was, it was really, and my, my, of all people, my drama teacher was there, so that was really interesting. So what makes the best-looking drag, what, what kind of man makes the best-looking drag queen? Somebody with good skin. <laughs> um... Now, I, there's two things I categorize. Some people some people look like Cher because they just happen to be born with a similar style face where this man could be Cher's brother, maybe. Mm -hmm. So when you just put on the makeup. But then there's good drag queens. Mm -hmm. That's a good lookalike because you, you already got the basics. A good drag queen could erase everything and become 10 different people because their artistry and their makeup, the way they do it, and their persona and their way to study videos and CDs and get e emulate every little detail of these people, you know, Celine Dion with the, the chest pounding. And they become characters, caricatures of themselves. Uh -huh. Diana Ross with the big hair, Celine with the pump. Uh -huh. uh, e each person has, Bette Middle has a very f fun walk she does. So you, you got to learn all those things that some good drag queens could do it all. Can just do that. So really, it's about the entertainment side. It's of about it. the end. If the it, and I always say this: if you're in my show and you're doing um, uh, Tina Turner, and you don't look too much like Tina Turner, but the audience is loving what you're doing, uh, I'm selling apples. But if they're buying your oranges, keep going because I just want the audience to have a good time. And Vegas is going to take a portion of it anyway, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> a big por the majority portion. <laughs> Can you s give us a bold action or if share kind of a takeaway? If somebody could walk out of here and start doing something differently, advice from you? Okay, do, do, like ask me that again. So, like a, some advice from you, if they could walk out of here, it's like a big kick-ass takeaway. So they could go be a share in person. Just be a, be better at the things that they do, or. Um, use some of the things that you've learned along the way to not make some of the same mistakes? From, from a business perspective, um, I, I think you need to really look at your contracts. Mm. You have to be able to say no, but you have to be able to walk away if you say no. So if you're going to call somebody's bluff, make sure you're willing to take the consequence. Um, be able to be uh, quick in, in your thought and your question. Uh, people would have, this is a tip I'll tell I, and I tell people when they come up to me and they say, um, uh, I, I, I was, I, I was thinking of, um, possibly putting a new character in, 
I go, let me just tell you something for the future. No, you can't put the new character in, but here's what you're going to learn, and next time you can. When you stop and you break and you keep stopping like that, you give somebody like me enough time that I've already figured out how I'm going to tell you no. So you gave me that opportunity to let you go through this 15-minute uh, 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 and then I said no because I've already rehearsed in my head how I'm going to do it. So <laughs> become the person that has that quick, if you fire at me and I don't expect it, then you got to have a better chance. So rehearse it. Know how you're going to do it. And don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. Because if you really feel you deserve it and you're good enough to do it, come in with that confidence. Come in with the confidence. I love yeah. that. And the contract advice is so good. Mm -hmm. That being there, pay attention, eyes wide open. And ask if you don't un understand what that means. Mm -hmm. You know, Because some people leave a show or leave a company and they can't do what they do for a period of time. Mm-hmm. And I'm going through that right now. Um, I'm, I'm signing a contract. They said, when it's done, if you were to leave, you have to take one year before you work again. And I was like, mm. well, first of all, it's not really legal here in Vegas because it's a right to work state. And no judge is going to say, we'd rather you be on unemployment than work. Right. But if you could enforce it and you can in other states, why would you do that? Right, right. You say either that. I walk away now so you don't get me at all or you take a chance and, le and let me have the job. Right. Right. So if there was an incredible person in my show and I could get them for six months, I'd rather have them for six months than never. Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. yeah, you could both use each other in getting what you need. So when we were talking about questions prior to this and you said I could ask anything, you, anything. you, you slipped out and said, you know, boxers or briefs. So now I have to ask that question, <laughs> boxers or briefs. Uh, neither, commando. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> What a beautiful way to end that. So if people want to get a hold of you based on that new information, mm -hmm. uh, if people wanted to get a hold of you or learn more about your upcoming shows and fun and things that you have going, how would they do that? Um, my my website is frankmarino.com. My Instagram, if you're out there and you want to have some fun, my Instagram is the at sign, the queen, the queen of Vegas, mm -hmm. which uh, same thing on Facebook. I have uh, Frank Marino. I believe it's at the queen of Vegas as well. But Frank Marino... Um, female impersonator to Las Vegas because there's a famous Frank Marino singer from the group Mahogany Rush uh, that get confused all the time. Make sure you have the right one. And um, if you're an impersonator out there and you do somebody really fun, I'm looking for a Taylor Swift. Ooh. So let me know. We're looking for you. All and, right. and also a Selena. I'm looking for a Selena as well. Selena and Taylor Swift. Yes. All right. So I throw that out there. Thank you. Thank you so oh, much I had for such being a good time. here. Thank you. I'm so glad. And we're going to get it and we're take it all and we're going to wrap it into I'm going to try to wrap it all into a top five kick ass. There but you thank go. you so much for being and here. And look with for us. me because in the middle of August, we are opening a brand new show at a brand new hotel. I wish I could say it now, but I didn't sign the ink yet. But as soon as they come up with the right amount of zeros, I will be putting that zero. All right. <laughs> my thing on there. So, but August for sure. Very soon then. Sounds perfect. Thank you so no, much. No, thank you so much, Brandy. Let's talk about some top five kick ass. As you know, this is the, my favorite part of the whole show. And especially when we have a special guest like Frank Marino here with us today. It's hard to pull it all together into a top five. But if we could, let's do it. Number one is to dare to reinvent. If there's ever a person that has done reinvention over and over and really pushed that, it's Frank. And he's done it here in Las Vegas. He's done it with the types of shows, pushing the entertainers that are around him, and then creating creating and transforming what's happening in entertainment here in Las Vegas as well. So dare to reinvent in the businesses that you are in, in the, the organizations that you work with as well. Number two, rise and grind. I think that, that we talked about from a business standpoint, don't be afraid to put the business in, in show business, right? I mean, it's the fact that you have to put in the work that anybody that thinks that, that just, I'm just so pretty, or I'm just such a great singer. That's just not enough. There are a lot of talented people out there. It's the people that work hard that really are differentiated in in entertainment and in all industries and in leadership as well. Number three, it's it's see the sparkle in others. And whether you have that gut intuition of just the experience of knowing when someone's got it, or just understanding when you can be there for somebody else and seeing that this that somebody has some sparkle inside and how you can help pull it out of them and push a young person in becoming more experienced or being loyal to that group that has been with you all along. 
And number four is really about entertain. I love the way that, that Frank framed it for us today in saying that at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if I'm selling apples and you got oranges. If, if the audience is loving it, then go with it. Go with what you got. Give the people what they want. Entertain. Know what it is that your strengths are and be ready to, to be nimble enough to be able to entertain on the fly. And finally, number five is to be fabulous and be you. I think that uh, we lose sight of that authenticity of ourselves and and try to conform to whatever it is that you know social stigmas or things have created for us instead of just being comfortable in our own skin and saying who is who am I and how can I be more me and be the fabulous me that I'm intended to be that's our top five kick ass <laughs> So thank you again to Frank for thank being you. here with so me today and head out to his social media and things, places that he was talking about as well. But of course you can hit us up at the strategic or at strategic Hotbox on Instagram and at Brandy love, B R A N D I L U V at Instagram and Twitter. And we will post all of, of Frank's information out on our sites as well. Until I see you again, get out there and kick some ass.